Hey y'all, it's Drew. We're back with another Texas A&M film breakdown video. Today we're going over this past weekend's victory over Mississippi State. Obviously it was a great win. I'm going to talk about our defense and our running game. That is our identity, of course. Remember, run the football. So we're going to get into that today. I'm also going to explain why maybe the scoreboard did not indicate why we were actually the dominant team on the field. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's go! Okay, guys, so we're going to start off with why the score did not indicate how much we dominated Mississippi State. As you can see, it's 28-14. That was the end score of the football game. Minute and 24 left in the game, third and four. We are able to get down to the one-yard line. Unfortunately, we didn't score. And we ran out the clock. So maybe you could throw up an extra seven points if we had time on the clock to run it out and score more. We needed to score Maybe it could have been 35-14. So that's already one way that the score could have been different, even though it was not. Next one, 4th and 14. As you can see, they're punting to us, so we would get the ball back. Maybe we would score on that play. We're up 14-0. But we make a very bonehead decision. By who? Number 9, Leon O'Neal. Um, he jumps. Goes airborne, actually. Uh, this is a penalty. If you have this blockade right here, you are not allowed to jump over that. That is for safety reasons, and that is a penalty that has been created in college football. It is an automatic first down for the punting team. So instead of receiving the ball, we had to go back on defense and try to stop them. So essentially that's a turnover, and you never know how that could have turned out. Maybe that's three points if we drive down the field. Maybe it's you know a touchdown or something. That's more points for us, less points for them. This is how a punt should work, okay? First guy blows up the blockade. Outside guys tries to get a hand on it, right? You kind of split outside, spread them out. You get a nice block. That did set us up for the touchdown to make it 14-0. Um, this was our last unfortunate event, <laughs> but we have a throw, slant route right here. And if you didn't watch the game, I'm just going to kind of key you in. The ball was intercepted. And you might think, hmm, who intercepted the ball? Was it this guy who undercut the route? Maybe it was this guy. It was like tipped back to him. Nope. The interceptor was this guy. About 10 to 15 yards away from the ball. That is not magic right there. I did not CGI put that ball together. That just happens sometimes. You get unlucky. You throw a ball. It gets tipped up way far in the air. And you get an interception. Obviously, if it was just an incomplete pass, we're looking at the field. We're looking, maybe we can get a field goal. Maybe we can punt them inside. Instead, they run it back really far. Sets them up for good field position. So, three plays. Scoreboard is only 14 points. We definitely dominated them in all three facets of the game. I showed you the special teams. Now, let's get into how we dominated them on the defensive end. The main storyline on this side of the ball is how we were able to get pressure with three defensive linemen and eight men in coverage. Um, if you're able to have eight men in coverage, especially against this offense of Mississippi State, and I've done a video on them before in their offense, I'll link that down below, but to get pressure and to be able to guard all of the different crossing routes, I mean, that's all enough that I need to say, but to do that is incredible. As you can see, we're able to get pressure, nothing's open. PV had a game. I think it was defensive lineman of the week for the SEC. Not only do you get sacks, and we had six sacks on the game, but you get quarterback pressures. And we had five quarterback pressures on the game. And why that's so important is that when you're able to get to the quarterback, he's backing up, he gets hit in the face, the ball soars, or maybe it's underthrown, or it's left or right. And by doing that, you're able to get interceptions. You're able to get what you want on your side of the ball. So not only sacks, but pressures is what was really the the storyline of our defense on the night. We only held them uh, to negative two yards from the rushing side of their offense. So I don't think you can do any better than that, obviously, to not allow them to have any positive gains from the entirety of the game. Obviously, they had some positive rushes, but... Look right here. You have a four-man rush, and we get pressure. The main play for here is looking at three guys on the right side um, and one guy on the left side. And as you can see, they kind of slide it to have a mono a mono or one-on-one -on -one, um, heads-up play. And this guard is expecting something to come outside. Usually, you don't overload one side. You'll kind of twist them inside because everyone will shift too far. 
And when he is just in no man's land and you have our best defensive lineman, Liao, spin moving a second string tackle. Actually, their first string tackle got injured the play before. And a second string quarterback that came in for C.J. Costello. You design a play perfectly for a sack. Um, another great play call by Mac, Mike Elko, our defensive coordinator. Let's put six guys on the line. And we'll drop back one into coverage. It's this guy dropping back. And let's just see how they handle it, right? Do they go one-on-one -on -one with everybody? Do they slide to the left, slide to the right? You know, cha-cha slide style. They don't even know what's going on. Our guys are getting straight through. We have a two-on-one -on, -one on Liao. Outsides one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, what what's going on with you, big fella? You, did you block somebody? Because looks like you're blocking your own guy. And we're about to have three guys to the quarterback. So when you not only switch it up from a three-man rush to a four-man rush, you kind of dial in some different plays for some new players. And you're able to get pressure with three, but then you really get pressure with a six drop back one, so a five-man rush. I mean, that's just incredible. Things like this will happen in the game. We'll get the ball, fumble, pick. Come on, fumble, Ruski. Also, guys... This is twice this has happened in our in our games. We get the ball, scoop, and score, and that means everybody else. Good job, Buddy Johnson, but, like, what are you doing? What, block these guys. Come on. I mean, we know our big fellas can't run that much, but we need to do a better job on that. That's crazy. All right, now let's move into the running game. Um, obviously, you can see 0-0, zero zero, goal line, hand it off. It's going to be a touchdown. I really want to focus, though, on this new angle right here, and this is the storyline for our rushing game. Is how we are able to double team a player and be able to get up to that second level. And that's how you're able to get those 10 yard runs. Uh, the first level is obviously this defensive line. The second level is gonna be the linebackers. So on this play, we're gonna have a double team. We're gonna have a double team. We're gonna have a double team. And the idea of a double team, once I get to it, right, you see the double team. The idea is that you're gonna pass it off to a player, right? So this lineman will bump him and make sure that he's all set all holding on to his player one-on-one -on -one to make the correct block. And then he's going to be freed up to go to the linebacker. And same here. He's going to pass it off there, and he's going to be freed up to the linebacker. Pass it off here. He's going to try to get everything underneath. Okay? And so when he's going to go up to the linebackers, linebackers, there's only one guy who can make the play, and it's this backside linebacker. But when you're on the five-yard line, you have a fast running back hitting the hole, not making any cuts, quick decision, he's able to, to just follow this V downhill and jump forward for the touchdown. And this guy can't scrape over the top. There's too much going on. As you can see, now they have all reached a one-on-one -on -one block, and you jump forward. Let me show that one more time. Double blocks, go up to the next line, touchdown. Uh, and that's just the storyline of our offense this game. So let's look at it. We're going to have a right run. And what we like to do sometimes here is not block this end. That allows one extra lineman to get to somebody else, maybe move up to the second level. You get your guys pushing in different angles. You have this hole created. And right here, this middle linebacker is the only guy that can make the play. And when he's scraping over the top and our running back is hitting the hole and we're getting this play side linebacker, he's not able to make the play. We're able to make a move and have such a great play. Same play we're going to run again. Don't block this defensive in. We're going downhill here. Linemen get up to the second level. We have obviously a crease created by our other offensive linemen. And by doing that, second and four, get about a 10-yard gain. It's the second level that is able to get us longer runs and really wear on a defense. This is another run play that we really like to use. We're going to run it twice. It's going to be a motion across. We're going to fake this kind of jet motion. We're going to have this tight end. He's going to go across the ball and call it blasting the defensive end. Um, and the running back will come through. So fake the jet. Tight end goes and blocks. And what's really happening right here is we are selling a right run. Okay? And there's a hole, and you can hit that hole, and that's totally fine. But the idea is by blasting this defensive end and all of this this flow goes to the right. These linebackers kind of get sucked up into this, this area, and our running back can make a great jump cut and get back outside. So as you can see, jump cut, 
and now he's off to the races. Let's see it one more time. Motion across, handing off to the running back, blasting the outside in. We don't get as much of a crease, but still, same thing. We're not coming down to the, that would be our left side. We're kind of breaking it back to the middle or to the right. Linemen get to the second level. Now we're getting hit at five yards instead of like two or three. Last play call that I like to run here is uh, kind of this two by one set with a tight end to the two by side. We're going to have a bubble by this guy. Tight end's going to be a one on one block, and that allows us to pick any hole possible. Okay, line blocks down. Instead of blasting, he's just going to be on that side. And when the line, the linebackers that's unblocked, now you have a two hole read to make. And if you jump too early, we can break it outside. And that's what's really great about this play is that you have the bubble. You have the mono a mono, right? So even this guy is kind of put in conflict. Does he go with the bubble? Does he come downhill? If he comes downhill too fast, which we saw in the last play, we break it outside. If he doesn't come downhill fast enough, now we hit the hole. And like I said, we're getting hit at five or six yards, and we have a strong running back. We're able to get 10 to 12. Last play I want to show you. This is actually our freshman running back, Achain, and Kind of give you some more. I know I've showed Haynes King in the past. Show you some promise in the future of how we got some young guys. Um, same play right here, bubble. We got this one-on-one -on -one block with a tight end. The play would, would come downhill, right? You know, backside linebacker, fills, you know, maybe break it outside or something. I think it was mainly this defensive end kind of crashing this side. You know, we get to the second level is really where we want to go. But great read by the... Running back, Achain, he goes right here. Yet again, another fill by the linebacker, so we're just going to bounce it outside, right? If he goes outside, inside, inside, outside. It's what you do. You pick what he doesn't pick. And so you go outside, first and 10, getting hit at 9 yards. We make an 11-yard gain. So I was really impressed with the offensive linemen. Shout out to them. They have been great all year um, and obviously all phases of the game. So that's my analysis on the game. We have a bye week next week, so I'll see you in – two weeks for Arkansas, but please subscribe to the channel. Comment below what you guys think, how A&M's been doing, positives, negatives, everything like that. Give the video a like, and without further ado, I'll see y'all in the next one.